A lot of people are taking fentanyl without even knowing it. I got addicted to it from a hospital. I was drunk as a child. Turn them on, died over here on a wall. Another friend died over man. They just it's time for behind the fentanyl. It's like in pills, even in marijuana. Out of 10, how many are you using it? Eight. Eight out of 10 in Skid Row. Is it by design to get people more hooked or it's just by accident? It's gonna give us a positive or a negative. When you see new people come in, you're in Skid Row, you're, you're fucking scared to death. Grandma of it's $120. How long does that last you? A day. You can get what you want by trading your skill set. Currency is not just money, rarely is it money. Police officers have gotten OD'd from it, from touching it, and from just smelling it. What am I smelling right You're now? Smelling that, paint. Oh, that's paint. Okay, no <laughs> labs going on here. This is an affluent place. Are they taking fentanyl on purpose? A worker makes it, he dies, they bury him, and then another one comes on. Drugs do not discriminate. This happens in every corner of every city. Good morning, guys. Beautiful Santa Monica, California. But today's story isn't so beautiful. It's about the very deadly drug, fentanyl, and how it's ripping through American society. The interesting thing we're going to get into today is many people are ODing on fentanyl without even knowing they're taking fentanyl. We're gonna learn how it's laced in other drugs, can be found in other pain pills, even marijuana. So we're gonna to go to Newport Beach today, a very affluent place, meet up with a local named Bryce, who used to be in drug harm prevention, now works in fentanyl testing. He has a really good understanding of what's going on with fentanyl. We'll start the story there, in the wealthy area, end up in the not so wealthy area, Skid Row, to see how it's affecting everybody, all socioeconomic backgrounds, all different races and colors, everyone under the sun is being affected, many people unknowingly, by this very deadly drug. Should be a bit depressing, but important story. Let's do this. Beachfront Newport Beach, beautiful place. Here we have Bryce Bachelor, right? Bryce yep. Bachelor. Are you a bachelor? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. You were telling me on the phone that a lot of people are taking fentanyl without even knowing it. It's like in pills, even in marijuana. I know about almost a dozen people in the last couple years that have died from fentanyl overdoses. Many of them being contaminations. Friends locally here in Newport Beach or around the area? Yes, uh, friends in Colorado and here. Oh, I'm sorry, um, man. Yeah, it's-, it's That's just, brutal, it's, 10. It's, it's crazy. I know two people that took Xanax that died together was a boyfriend, girlfriend. Another person that uh, worked right down here, I actually worked with my brother. He actually loved coming out, bodyboarding, right here at the beach. Right. One day he hurt his shoulder. He went to a friend to get a pain pill because his shoulder hurt really bad. And this pain pill was produced illicitly and it ended up containing fentanyl in it and it ended up killing him. So just like a Valium or something? Correct, yeah. It was either a Valium or a Percocet or you know an Oxycontin, something like that. Okay. Yeah. So contamination in the processing of the drug, how does that work? I'll be clear, this is a hypothesis. Okay. But it's the best hypothesis available. When drugs go through their steps of the supply chain, at some point along the way, drugs are crossing paths and sometimes being contaminated with fentanyl. This has been happening quite a bit with methamphetamine and cocaine. These drugs are sold in tandem. Something like heroin or fentanyl is also coming through Mexico with cocaine being sold to similar buyers that then distribute out further to other sellers. And when these drugs are being processed, especially heroin, it's being cut with fentanyl. Okay. Cocaine is being contaminated or coming into contact with this heroin or fentanyl, which is then winding up in bags of cocaine that are being sold on the street level. It's still considered rare that you're gonna come across a bag of cocaine that has a lethal amount of fentanyl, Okay. but it's starting to happen more and more and more and more. Is it by design to get people more hooked or it's just by accident it's in the 
these drugs are close together in transport and production, so therefore something gets into something else. If you are doing heroin or fentanyl, this uh -huh. is a sedative. This is something that brings you down okay. and puts you in a sedated state. Uh, if you're taking cocaine or methamphetamine, that's not what you're looking for. You want to be in an elevated state. Okay. So mixing these drugs together doesn't make a lot of sense. It, it really doesn't make any sense. Are people in Newport, this is an affluent place, are they taking fentanyl on purpose, do you think? Many people, or that drug's not coming into here? It's only by accident that people are having these ODs. I think for the, the majority of people, people are not consuming fentanyl here okay. on purpose. Is it a big issue? in just the major cities or it's it's everywhere uniformly in the country right now obviously it depends on where you are some places it affects more than others okay but this is an issue everywhere as the fentanyl epidemic has ramped up a lot in the last couple of years it's been more and more important to make sure that you know you're not coming into contact with fentanyl having access to testing if you can and having access to naloxone or narcan which is a reversal uh, drug that basically will take you out of an overdose. To be fair, the, the safest way not to run into any contact with fentanyl is not to do anything. <laughs> correct. Right? Correct, correct. Drink water, you can roll a virus, yeah, call yeah, it good. Yeah. Okay, yeah. your fentanyl is all coming over the border from Mexico, right? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Pretty much? Yeah. Made in China? A lot of it is coming from China. So basically, the chemical manufacturing laws in China aren't super tight, so fentanyl as well as precursors okay. of fentanyl are being shipped to ports in Mexico. And then from there, they either, if it's fentanyl, then they can cut it into whatever pills, drugs they have. If it's a precursor, then they can make the fentanyl there. Okay. And then, you know, put it into whatever drugs they need. The chemicals come from China on a boat to Mexico. Mm -hmm. Why not come on a boat to the United States? It's too hard to smuggle it in. Yeah, I've seen plenty of videos online of where a cargo ship is coming in to a port in Mexico. And yeah. what they do is someone that works on the boat will drop the drugs off the cargo boat and then a fishing boat will come get it. Okay. And then like a little tourist boat will come up to the fishing boat. They'll throw it up the, the fishing boat. The tourist boat will scoop it up and then they'll just drive it right into the land. Okay, and that wouldn't work here. No. Too, too many eyeballs. No, yeah, it's okay. uh, too risky. Okay, so ingredients come from China. Then it's brought up through Mexico over the border, which is pretty easy to get things over the border these days. Yeah. I was down there. Uh, <laughs> back last April, it's pretty unbelievable what's going on there. So it easily goes over the border and then the distribution channels up here, that's all set up easy peasy, huh? Yeah. And this is what? It's a halfway house. This right here. Yeah. People come here who have drug, drug issues or whatnot. Yeah, one of many in Newport Beach. There's, you know, about a dozen rehab centers and halfway houses within two miles of here. If you want help, you can get it. Yeah, yeah it's expensive, but yeah. <laughs> People are paying for this. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's not go get free help if you're on the street and you no. got a problem. Most of it's probably covered by insurance, but I mean, very expensive. This is high end. They could they can improve the door if they're super expensive, <laughs> don't you think? Over the pandemic, the last two years, COVID's gotten a lot of media coverage. Fentanyl has gotten some attention but not enough compared to the damage that it's done one thing that i think that most people have no idea about is the mortality rates for people between the age of 18 and 45. the mortality rate for people that have died from fentanyl compared to covid is about five to ten times five to ten times yeah do you think the government's doing much let's just say at a federal level are there huge initiatives to to sort of turn the tide with this or i think that the response has been pretty slow um and it's very reactive it's not proactive this year for 2022 the biden administration is allocating about 11 and a half billion dollars to try and fight the opioid ep epidemic uh -huh. which is a 54 percent increase right uh so they're definitely trying to step things up but it's been a very uh, reactive approach rather than a proactive approach. We were just talking, she's like, are you filming a vlog? And I said, yes, about fentanyl, would you like to be in the story? You know about fentanyl, yes. obviously. Someone very close to my family uh, overdosed from fentanyl about a year ago. Did they know it was fentanyl or was it laced or something? Um, I think it was laced like heroin it was just like that last time it's just like you know sorry yeah, it's really 
do you know if there's a lot of that going? Do you hear this from other people? Yes, I, I know that it's laced in like everything right now. My dad and my stepmom are sober, so they know all about that and they sponsor people. I know it's like been laced with everything recently, so it's like really scary. All right guys, so we're gonna get on the highway, go about an hour north into the belly of the beast skid row where there's a lot of fentanyl on the streets there. I was there yesterday. It's uh, quite unbelievable. The goal is to actually talk to someone who's a user and get that perspective. I got Corey, I got Corey. Okay, no, okay. No. You're going to um, show me some users, right? Yeah, right here. I'm trying to talk to you, man. Who up here doing? Okay, guys, we're downtown Skid Row. We're gonna see actually what's going on in the streets. And the goal also is to get Bryce over here. We don't know where Bryce went. We're looking for Bryce. I just waiting for a buddy who's coming out. He's gonna test it if it's good fentanyl or not. Over here. Yeah. Your name? Lori. Lori, you use fentanyl? Yes. How often? Every day. Every day, so tell me about it. What's When did that start? Well, I was on heroin for 20 years. Well, I was drugged as a child. I got addicted to it from a hospital. My ex-boyfriend hit me on my side, it ruptured my spleen, broke all the ribs on my left side, and punctured my lung. So they had me on 30 milligrams of morphine, 40 milligrams of Oxycontin, and 75 micrograms of fentanyl for 16 weeks. Then tell me to go home and take Tylenol. What's your name? Susie. Susie, okay. So you use what, every day, every other day? Every day. I have to, otherwise I'll get sick. So are you, are you pretty high right now? No, it, it doesn't even get me high. It, it just takes get you high anymore. It takes pain from my left side, and then it just keeps me from being sick. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. So what's the what's the fentanyl scene these days? Let's just say in the last couple of years, what's been going on here in Skid Row? Everybody's doing it, and there's no more heroin. There's just fentanyl. It's even in it. It's it, they cut it with everything now. It's in methamphetamines. It's in cocaine. It's way stronger. Please, please tell me it's not in cocoa puffs for kids. It's not Cocoa Puffs for kids. Okay, not yet. Good. Good to hear. You were saying like a few years ago, maybe two, three years ago, I, not much fentanyl down here? No, there wasn't. Fentanyl came around here like in 2017. I wasn't, I, when I just got out of prison, um, people were talking about it. And I'm like, what is it? I don't know. And then finally when I went to the hospital and they gave it to me, I th thought, okay. They really actually give people fentanyl. And they were like, yeah, well, yeah, it's in the hospital, so. They gave you quite a bit from the hospital, huh? Yeah. Okay. Do you have any on you right now? Um, I don't. You don't? Okay. Why? My boy here, Bryce, tests it to see how good it is. Okay. Yeah. He oh, can actually, test. I think I do have a little bit. You got a little bit? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so what are we going to do with that? Uh, right here. Can you can you test it right here? We well, just, we're up, you know the streets we better than me. Water. We need water. Yeah. Uh, there's a store right here. Bryce is an expert on testing fentanyl. Yeah, and these are the kits you're actually, you represent right now, right? Correct. Right. Let's give it a try. Let's see yeah. how this works. So have you ever tested your fentanyl before, Susie? Or no. your, your drugs? No. Okay, you don't have to answer this question if you don't want to, but are you an IV user? Do you snort it? Do you I smoke it. it? You snort it? I shoot it. Oh, you shoot it, okay. What we'll do? Not too many people do. A lot of people have stopped shooting up drugs just to smoke it, which is kind of a good thing, but right. then, but they're taking one hit off the foil and they're dying from it. There are more gotcha. people smoking it rather than shooting it because of the dangers associated with well, it. That, plus, it, plus it's like it, it lasts longer. It's, like, it's 50 times stronger than regular heroin, 100 times stronger than morphine. So it's like, you know, so how do you do uh, two it? milligrams you... is a lethal dose. Yes. That's it. So how much do you take at a time? I do like a half gram a shot when I do okay. it. I do okay. a lot. People okay. look at me like I'm crazy. Okay. Because my shots would probably kill 10 or 15 people. Okay. Wow. Have you, you've never used a, a test strip before? No. Okay. So what this test strip does is it identifies either fentanyl or fentanyl analogs. Do you know what carfentanil is? Have you heard of that? Yeah. Okay. What, yeah, but they, they think that because the shit runs clear here, mm -hmm. it's carfentanil. Mm -hmm. I think, I say no, because it's like half a milligram of carfentanil is a lethal dose yeah. compared to regular fentanyl. Correct. So this has the ability to identify fentanyl and also other fentanyl analogs, so different types of fentanyl, because right now I don't, there's... I don't think there's real carfentanil on the street. I think it's just fentanyl. People think because it runs clear when they smoke it, uh -huh. that's carfentanil. I think it's just what they cut it with. Uh -huh. Carfentanil is very rare just because of how dangerous it is and, yeah. and how lethal well, can it can car, be. Car fentanyl? Yes. Yeah. yeah. 
What's that a pure form or something? As a matter of it's, fact, no. Prince, Prince, he died from an accidental overdose of fentanyl. So did Tom Petty. Prince did. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was something else. No, he died from fentanyl. Oh. Everybody think Michael Jackson died from Provol, but Prince died smelling? from. Fent- what am I smelling right I'm now? Smelling paint. A- oh, that's paint. Okay, good, <laughs> good. No labs going on here. No, they make this shit in Mexico. It's all from Mexico. Huh? Yeah, they say that every time the, a worker makes it, that he dies, they bury him, and then another one comes on. My friend caught a habit from just touching it. Okay, Cause so. Because he, he sells it. Right. He doesn't wear gloves. I'm not wearing gloves. He got a habit from it. Just need a tiny little scoop. Just right here. So that's what it is. It just looks like cocaine, basically. Yeah, see, that's what they're doing a lot lately now, too. They're telling people they have cocaine, and they're giving people lines of fentanyl, and they're dying from it. Did you say Teco? You just on everything, right? Waste on my day? Huh. You want me to just, like, scoop it to the side? Here, you just want to take it out? I don't care if... Can I hold it? Yeah, I... I just usually right, keep it on me in case if I see, here. I keep it on it's me in case I see somebody here, sick. Guys. If I see somebody sick, I'm gonna give it to them because I don't want them to be sick. Right. So that's how the test works. You take a little, you put it in some container. Usually, if we have a cup or something, okay. might, it's better. But obviously, we don't have a lot on hand, so we're gonna use this as our testing vessel. Okay. So if this was marijuana, that's what you do. You put the that if you thought it was laced with fentanyl, you put the marijuana in this testing kit. What you could do is take a cotton swab and wet it with water, and then touch, let's say, okay. cannabis, and then put that in water, and then test it from there. Gotcha. So we're gonna put a little bit of water. Because of how sensitive these tests are, it doesn't matter if we put does extra Does it tell you how much fentanyl is in it? Is that what's it in does it? not. It's gonna give us a positive or a negative. That would be really fucked up if it tested none, there's none in there. Yeah, you're on, you're on like I'm rat like, poison or something. Like, that's what meth is made out of, rat poison. So we're gonna dip it in there for about all right, 15 all right, guys. seconds. And then 15 second one, dip. One line is positive, two lines is negative. Where's the lines come from? <laughs> Usually the first line's around there and then the second line's up there. Usually the second line is somewhere around there, which if the second line shows so up around there, there's no it's positive. At all? No, no, there is. This is testing positive. Okay, positive. good. And I don't have to kill my dope connection today. <laughs> I don't have to kill my dope connection today. So, do you, do you, Susie, do you have any goals of getting off this stuff or, or yes, not really? I just, the, the kick is really bad. The I got point, arrested huh? for a week last year. And I was sick the whole, I was so sick when I got out, that's why I did it again. I'm curious, Susie, have you ever overdosed? Yes. Are you concerned or afraid about potentially dying no, from not, this? No. No. Because my tolerance is so high now, it doesn't even, I do a half gram of shot, that's a lot. What's the, uh, what's the percentage of people using fentanyl in the streets right now, you think? How many, out of, out of 10, how many are using it? Eight. Eight out of 10 in Skid Row? Yeah. And that's the number one go-to? Do you guys use? Of course. Nobody does. Nobody even does heroin no more. They all do fentanyl. Cheaper and stronger. Right? It's not cheaper. It's way expensive. It's like a gram of it's one hundred and twenty dollars or one hundred dollars. How long does that last you? Uh, a day. It will last me a day. One hundred and twenty bucks a day. Yeah. How do you swing that? I hustle. I do high end merchandise. I go to stores and steal clothing. <laughs> you get clothing from store. You yeah, steal from clothing. Yeah, I have clothing. somebody who buys it, and then I just yeah. What's it? Pointers go crack and heroin. And then so now it's meth and fentanyl, yeah. right? Both yeah, I stronger. Black for a long time. Yeah, I avoided like selling fentanyl yeah. for a long time because I was scared. In 20 years, who knows what it'll be? Do you used to? Stronger. I do not. No, you I know. have friends that I used to. You want to drink um, that? You know, I'm, I'm sober now. Good um, for you. Yeah, it's it's a battle every day, but um, you have to eventually want it yourself. No one does heroin anymore. Now fentanyl's here, and for years I didn't sell it. So for the last five years, you would need to do so much more heroin than to do fentanyl. Right, hundred times harder. Yeah. Well, people don't even realize they're getting it in their drugs, and then when they switch to a, a different, um, a different supplier, the buzz isn't the same. Like, wait, what's going on? This doesn't feel the same. Well, in their coke or in their crack or in their their black, which is heroin, right. they were getting fentanyl, they didn't even know it. So that's when it's scary. Is when you're you're shooting or snorting something, you don't know fentanyl's in there. That's where most of the ODs come from. It's from those people. Especially like heroin, or they put a little bit of fentanyl. It's almost my new amount. As you're testing it. You know, crystal cocaine, they say 66% of cocaine has fentanyl in it. If you try and hold your breath underwater, you're eventually going to have a reflex. You're going to like, you're going to pop up, right? Your body's going to take over, like you're going to pass out, and then you're going to gas for air. Right. Same thing if you're if you're smoking Fetty. So if it's... Fetty, do you call it Fetty? That's what it's, it's known as. Okay. Um, but if you have a tolerance for drugs and you're smoking fentanyl, I've never known anybody to overdose. The people that overdose are the ones that shoot it or snort it, don't know it's in there, okay? Or it's, it's in crack and they have no narcotic tolerance, like to opioids. 
take a big hit of that and they get really high. And they'll say, oh, my friend overdosed, they died. There's a good chance they got really high for five minutes and, right. and fell down. This is called Wise Batch Harm Reduction. So it's actually my Recruit. business. And what I'm gonna be doing is trying to provide testing resources to different needle exchanges and community health centers well, around the United you States. You should have a lot more of these. What's the youngest age you see? Uh, I've seen 16, 17 yeah, year olds. 16, 16, 16, 16, 16 uh, year old. 13 year old. I spoke black I've for the first time when I was 14. I've seen doing Heroin. You guys all live down here? No. I live, right I live in an apartment streets. down here, yeah. Nope, just coming down to visit, coming to see a few buddies. Okay. I live in the hotel across the street. That hotel. Mm -hmm. So the way you get this is you hit stores, you make your money that way, you buy the drug, repeat, repeat every day. Yes. How long? How, how long has that been going on for? For a year and a half. I need a new booster. What's that? I said I need a new booster. A booster? What do you mean? That's people that go to the stores and steal it. He wants a new sweater, he wants to Oh, he doesn't boost. Sorry, go get it. You don't boost? And I trade him drugs, I give him half money and half price for it. So boosting is when you go steal? Yeah. yeah. I'm usually go back to prison. I've been out four years, and this is the longest I've ever been out. So I'm usually back in, like, within six months, so it's me being out this long, mm -hmm. it's harder for me because I can go into a store, even with the mask on, and they'll still know who I am. <laughs> Do you, is there anything you like about prison? Uh, is that a bad question? No, I just go there to do time and get out. I don't make no friends. I don't want nobody's phone number. I just go there to do my time and get the fuck out. When I used to, to be down here more, when I was like using every day and stuff, and you see new people come into the area and they weren't known and stuff, and they're, you know, you're in Skid Row. You're, you're fucking scared to death. People are freaked out. But then you get comfortable. You learn how to monetize like your abilities. So some people are good at certain things. Some are better at boosting. Some are better at, you know, turn tricks but if you're around Wait, enough turn tricks what do you mean? turn tricks would be like sell sell your body for sex or something okay. like that but if you're around enough you'll find people that you know you can get what you want by trading your skill sets so she goes steals stuff trades to him gets her drugs and like that's currency is not just money like rarely is it money or, or part of the time it's money whatever you do whatever you're good at however you can bring in money you know just okay. like in the real world how can you monetize yourself or your business and then do that down here and to get what you need so the trading is uh, it's amazing I've seen people trade up from little little things like a fucking pen and like get up to a car like that shit happens if you do it at the right time right and you know ride the market with certain things is uh, it's amazing I so good so people bring me shit all day long. Electronics, cell phones, they bring me clothes. I have boosters like her. And you're okay with being on camera? Yeah, I'm fine. So no, problem. no problem. No problem. Everybody knows this over there. I don't even lie to my family. So, so uh, fentanyl mostly, right? Fentanyl and crystal. That's what I mostly say. Fentanyl, all from Mexico, right? All from Mexico. It's all pressed in kilos, yeah. Just curious, how yeah. often is uh, the fentanyl winding up in, in the meth as well? Everybody says there's some meth going around that makes you tired and sleepy. Uh -huh. It has to be in there at night. There's times when I smoked some meth and I'm tired right away. I just took 12 hours. You know? they, they definitely do it. I know cocaine, they even put it in there. You can't feel it, but it's there to make it addictive. When I come off meth and I get, like, I got sick about a couple weeks ago, like stomach flu sick, I couldn't smoke because it would make me throw up. And so I was off crystal. I felt the, I felt the effects of, like, detoxing, which you don't feel off crystals. And it doesn't have those kind of properties where you need to go into detox. You need some sleep, usually, for three or, three or four days, and you, you don't get those physical effects. And, I could definitely feel some physical effects in that. My friend, um, his first drug sales charge, they gave him 20 years for it. For selling fentanyl. It's not a misdemeanor, it's a felony. You're okay with being on camera? Yeah, I'm fine. They, if, you, if, if they find it on you, they uh, make a big deal about it. Yeah. They don't even want to touch it. Police officers have gotten OD'd from it, from touching it, and from just smelling it. Bryce, you, are, you still hanging? You didn't touch it, did you? No. All right. Bryce is still standing. It's That's okay good. To touch it. No, okay. it's not. My homeboy kind of had it from touching it. Well, look, he kind of had it because you're touching it, you're not washing your hands, you're putting it in your mouth, you're touching other drugs. Yeah, so that's what yeah. Happens. What are this? This is it's, 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 it's Narcan. It's, it's injectable in the lock zone. It, it will bring you out of a, um, a comatose fentanyl stage or a heroin stage. Better than the nasal ones. You, you think yeah, so? Because, I mean, I know yeah, so because, because everybody says that. People. Really? Yes. People, people say that they're, they're, they're giving four or five. The fentanyl things in the nose, like five of Okay, minutes. so you guys, you guys all carry this stuff in case you OD, you carry that? People fall out all the time. From just taking a hit, they'll OD. Those, those are horrible. Every time somebody ODs, they say, I just gave him four or five Narcans. That stuff really fucks up your body. It depletes everything out of you. It makes, you, don't work. It makes you sick. You have someone that's dead. You have like, to dead. chill that hand back. People don't really the fucking doses. They put like, the back of the head and then right. put the head yeah. over. Let's bounce on this street. Thank you guys. Yeah. I wish you the best. Yeah. Person died right here. Two of people died right up in this hotel right here behind it. That hotel. My friend died over, over there. Another friend of mine died over here on the wall. 
Behind the fentanyl. Another fentanyl. Man, they just dying for behind the fentanyl. Do you use fentanyl? Negative. Never. Never have, never will. I ain't gonna do it. Good for you. We're gonna wrap this up, guys. It's um, quite disturbing and unfortunate what's going on with fentanyl. And you can see in this video, it's, it's hitting all segments of society. This is not a video to promote any drug at all, but uh, there is a way to test. And uh, that's quite frightening that this stuff is getting into absolutely everything on the streets. I'm gonna leave a link below to what Bryce does in the description. I feel good we brought some awareness to this situation. I don't feel good that I don't see a solution. Thanks, Bryce. Of course, no thanks, problem. Hopefully. Thanks for bringing us in. Yeah. And thanks for coming along on that, guys. Not an easy story, but I think a very important one. Take care. Till the next one.